everyone, I'm back for, you guessed it, another Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe stream. I'm very hyper fixated on this. It is my favorite thing. It is the only thing keeping me sane at the moment. Um, I love it. It makes me very happy. Um, so hold on while I push out my notifications. And then we will get moving. Oh, loser, my best friend's going to be Hamilton. Person not a Hamilton guy. Ooh, we're going to be watching a movie in the Stanley Parable server I'm in. Yippee! Made it to 200 members. Including me, I recently joined today. Uh, oh, I just forgot where I pushed my notifications out to. Okay, there we go. There's my personal Discord server, which, if you'd like to join my Discord server, um, it is in the link in my bio. Um, if you're watching from, uh, Steam, or not Steam, fuck. If you're watching from Twitch, um, it's in my description, my bio. If you're watching from, if you're watching from, uh, my YouTube VOD uploads, um, then it is in the description of the video. Uh, so hope to see you there. It's kind of dead right now, but that can be changed with more people joining. So, <laughs> join if you wish. Little sponge. More Stanley Parable time. I'll uh, do a couple more push-outs. I'm starting to push out to more platforms as well, so more people will kind of see that I'm streaming. Um, other than just those who are in my discords. But one moment while I push out these notifications, and then we will get started. Um, please load. Hello? There we go. Okay, push that out. Just one more and we will begin. I apologize for the painfully slow beginning. Um, just one moment and I will begin. I love making that noise. Sticker. Link. Stream. Done. And my story. All right. Well, without further ado, let's begin. Gotta set my time. Last time the guy said that I can set it to my favorite time, so we're gonna set it to... Fuck yeah. Okay, perfect. Now we can begin. Ha! 4.20am, my favorite time of day indeed. I love this man! I love setting this guy so much. He's so silly! Accurate, it's 420. <laughs> I like that he likes to collect this data on me. I appreciate that. <gasps> Setting sky! I love you, settings guy. All right, here we go. Yippee. This will probably be one of my shorter Stanley Parable streams. Either that, or it's gonna have a really random. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Because I will be eating dinner in about an hour. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. 
and although others might have considered it soul-winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very this? clearly Someone wrong. Shocked, <laughs> frozen solid, Stanley found himself Someone unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he okay. got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All right, I'm gonna ignore that there's just All a of whole Stanley. What gone. is that? Oh, the glitch. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. My dad! Yo, he dead! Like, just boss. My bucket! Now this, Stanley thought to himself, bestie. this is a bucket. And it This is a was. bucket! Whoa, guys, it's a bucket. Who would've known? It's a bucket, guys. Did you know it was a bucket? I didn't know it was a bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. All right. Let's go. Proper tail, Stanley. Ooh, here we go. Hold on. Still no one was here. No more Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Take out passive aggressively on coworkers. Resent coworkers for not supporting you more. Let it ball up inside you. Repeat. The broom closet. Stanley, we, we must move, move on from this broom closet simply because I have no remaining stickers. Get if I did, stickers. you can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. I think narrator needs to get more stickers. You need more stickers, Nanorator. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Fun fact, originally the Bucket was designed just so Stanley could have something funky to hold on to. They're like, oh, we should make something holdable for Stanley. But then it was like, what's the manager's metal? office? Like, a bucket. Stanley was yeah, once again stunned and then they to discover doing, not an indication of and then it into, life. Oh, we're gonna make a bunch Crushed of by the weight of this revelation, the, uh, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional the, um, dumpster fire, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it changed the bucket up the voice lines. Originally, it was just supposed was to the be the voice line changed from just narrator yes. just saying this Stanley is certainly to the saying most Stanley and the bucket, everything he did. But then they made one ending that was different with the bucket. Um, from there, it just spiraled into every ending being different with the bucket. And it's great. I love the bucket endings so much. They're so silly. Especially the, oh no. I think I'm having The feelings. elevator raced downward, downward plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Let's go, bucket. Whee! Look at that wacky light. Light bulb. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket both wondered to themselves. Let's go, Bucket. I wonder what these buttons do. I could never guess what's on these The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the Bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley no, created a gentle, reassuring us that okay, everything bucket. would be fine. I love fine. you, bucket. You'll be okay, bucket. I think we're 
there used to be more pirates. <laughs> Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raised furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. Bucket, no! No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the Bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the Bucket made a sassy comment. But at the last second, the Bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the Bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the Bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. Oh my god! The mind control was only a facility to disguise its true intentions. Look at that silly little guy! This all I along. want to stay. Stanley marveled at the metal the genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the Bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. Oh my god, silly birds! was happy. I am so happy. This is genuinely... Silly birds! God, I'm genuinely so happy. I love that ending. That is my new favorite. And I fucking love silly birds. You don't understand how much I love birds. They're so silly! I love oh, the silly birds! All of this code oh my god, I, I love silly birds so much. Stanley decided, I decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a I'm, memo. I'm so excited about that ending. I literally love birds so much. They're so silly. Finally, yes, the bucket. The bucket. Yes, bucket. Yes, yes, I love that bucket. I also love that bucket. Oh man. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest bucket. and entered the door on his left. Me and my bucket. Me and my bucket. Hello? Still, no one was here. Stanley needed the fired. bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps fired. his boss's oh, office oh, was where he'd find oh, answers. Tips for not getting fired. Don't get fired, guys. Just don't. Stop getting fired, guys. I can't believe you. Come on. Coming to a staircase, Stanley fired. and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Hey. I'm gonna throw myself into Stepping the into his manager's <laughs> office, Stanley was once again uh, stunned uh, to discover uh, not an uh, indication uh, of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Yeah, Even now, it. in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him, always. 
the Yo, bucket would. Fuck it. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. I don't need At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 28. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. Let's go, Bucket. My Bucket leads me. Very important. I love my Bucket. Me and my Bucket! I love my Bucket. Bucket is safe. Bucket is there for me when no one else loves me. Relationship and Stanley and the right Bucket walk straight bucket. ahead through the large door of the grid. Mind control facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. Violent death. Violent death. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Get knocked. No, I want to knock you over. Eh. Fall over! Oh. Violent death. Oh. Scribble, scribble. Violent death. At this point, Violent Stanley death. and the bucket were knowingly Violent walking death. forward into a very painful death for each of them. Violent death! Let's go! Oh, I love red! It's my favorite color! Whee! How did I survive that fall? First of all, I died from falling off the fucking cargo lift, but I can survive this fucking fall. Let's go, Bucket. Time to die. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the Bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the Bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket. But what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself. And he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying the bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. Let's go, bucket. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. Sorry, bucket. I don't know why, but I forget that happens. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way. But this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket, bucket to behold. This random British woman just took my bucket. That's not okay. We were supposed to die together. I can't fucking read that. Took my bucket. Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? Well, hey, listen, I know I'm a loser, but I'm not that pathetic, lady. I think you're just a little bitch, random lady. Burn no bucket. I am getting a call. Hello? Yes, it is. Yes! Hi! I missed no you, man sticker. can own a bucket, and certainly yeah. not a bucket as dazzling like to behold as this you. one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. I know. <laughs> That's okay. 
I'm being really loud upstairs as well. Hi! Hello! Big hole! Down I go! Oh, I'm just floating. Fuck it! Sorry, I have Stanley Parable open right now. I bought the games. Like, but Saturday. there is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I. Yes. That will right this terrible wrong. We have... We have a Let's Stanley and a narrator. Down. Let him be crushed by the machine. Yeah, Stanley, don't I don't mind, though. Narrator? Thing. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. Right now we can I'm save the world's the bucket buckets right from their treatment of tools and implements if only we bucket. let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, so as commander much, of the new world, I love a new the vision. <laughs> and I love Stan. It's been pretty good. They had some really good Alfredo at the school lunch today. Yeah, chicken Alfredo. Yum yum yum! Yeah! All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stan had decided to go really, to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Same old, same old. I've just been- I've been playing Stanley Parable for like hours at a time to keep myself sane. As sane as you can be for hyperfixating on the Stanley Parable. My bucket! One man, one bucket, one Stanley's chance to see their to destiny Legos together. Stanley's also been fronting to puzzles because he gets bored and just goes, ah, oh, Lego. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. Truly, being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. Stanley reflected on all they'd been through together. First, walking through the door on the right, then walking to the lounge, then arriving at the lounge. What a thrilling journey. The bucket we had a nightmare and he was just like, all right, I'll get us back to sleep. He just sat there for a little while and then passed out. Perhaps this was where the bucket felt most truly at home. Here in the employee lounge. But finally, the bucket was done being in the lounge. And they took the first open door on the left to get back to business. He didn't even know what to think of it because he woke up and sat there and stared at our wall blinking for like five minutes. said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. I love narrators. I love narrators. stupid fucking voice. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Go somewhere else. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because I don't know my talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket oh, had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket did. I almost died asked. instead. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. How clumsy of me. But as you, sorry, I cut you off when you were saying... No, no. stop. Look, Look there on the wall. wall. You see, there's, there's a, sign a sign right there. there. It says, there's no buckets say. past this <laughs> point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless... What if the problem yeah. is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I don't know what a bucket is. I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. Which, if that's true, well, my goodness, what am I, I think we have to do what something am I about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent oh no, I don't on like your the understanding of what Come is back. and isn't <laughs> Please. a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. I got scared that I was about to hear narrator. <laughs> Spooked. <laughs> narrator jump scare. <laughs> Now then, oh, enough, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios, and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Item Tony! One. Is this a bucket? This is not a bucket. Correct. I wasn't supposed it to be correct! It is a hologram of a bucket. Not an actual bucket. Him. Anyways, Tony's supposed to tell him he loves him too. 
<laughs> yeah, I was about to say I'm waiting Item for the fire. Is this a bucket? That's a bucket. Incorrect. It is it's a 3D a printed a recreation of a bucket. Not an actual bucket. No! Item 3. Is this a bucket? That's not a bucket. Incorrect. It's a bucket. This is a bucket. This is a bucket. I've been echoing so many of narrator's lines, I'm like annoying the shit out of everyone with it. Oh my god, Item a bucket! Four. Is this a bucket? Yeah, that's a bucket. What do you mean? Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous it's machine that tills the earth. I thought this it's was a gimmick. How on earth did you manage to screw it up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just with move the bucket, on to the next Eventually, one. narrator spirals into screaming. Oh, I'm having feelings for the bucket. <laughs> is this a bucket? That stupid ending. This is not a bucket. Into it's it. a bucket! I told this you tractors bucket. are buckets. Me too. When you get back, if you want to play it, I have no problem letting you do it. Is this a bucket? This is not a bucket. Trick question. Both. It's both. Gotcha. gotcha. Trick question. It's both. Yeah, I have the original Stanley Parable and I, I have Ultra Deluxe. Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. This is a bucket. <laughs> okay, you and I both know there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something, and therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Yes. Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? What? Yep. You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now, I'm somewhat adrift. At one point, he's an omnipresent voice, but if he really wants to, he can just straight up walk through the door in whatever form he Stan, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. You're a bucket, I'm afraid narrator. the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. Tear your I can't relationship apart? That. That's kind of gay, narrator. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game. <laughs> narrator said the bucket is tearing okay. our relationship Here we go. apart. Kind of gay, not gonna lie. He just deleted every bucket, and now it's just black. Not what everything happened? was a bucket. Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait, was everything a bucket? Everything was Every a bucket. single thing in the game was a bucket. Everything was My a bucket. God, I had no idea. How could a bucket. Except also, me. I am not a sorry, bucket after not. all. And you, Stan, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Oh, this is wonderful um, news. We're he not a bucket. Yes, text I actually feel much more at um, ease right now. It's delightful also, to get some like, clarity on I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get some clarity on that issue. But it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. We have a jokingly shocked reaction. He'll just dramatically slam our hands on the top of his head and open his mouth. And we all know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information I might do to a person? I love when he does that because he's All so right. goofy. Here we go. Also, every time I front in after him, he's just sitting on the floor on a pillow, building Legos. Because we only had one puzzle, and he completed the puzzle in like five minutes. And then he, he asked her dad, like, hey, do you have any more puzzles? All of his co-workers were gone. He just gone. What could it mean? He doesn't have anything Stan to had decided to go to the meeting. Although he has just Perhaps he had that simply missed the memo. Four, so I guarantee that's what he's going to be on to next. It's bucket time. It's bucket time. <laughs> Sorry, it's bucket time. That's my new. That's my new favorite line. Stanley bucket touched time, the bucket guys. tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Oh my God. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the... No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to me, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. And I get to hear the silly music. I love the adventure line so fucking much. Also, oh, I think good narrator Stanley. should I'm best glad you found your way like, here. I, I knew you'd find this place eventually. Like, no. No, I don't have any more buckets. 
I don't, or not eight bumpers. I don't have more stickers. It's time to move on. You see, on. your friends, friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around everywhere. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Man and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. I hate this baby, though. I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the adventure line? We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Follow if it plays the silly music. Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Yo, silly music! Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. It's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. Um, I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah. So I had to listen to Adventure Line music. He all, it kind of Don't actually triggered him up to front. So now he's we just need to get rid of the buffer. Days. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. In the Stanley Parable Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket like Destroyer, us. you'd see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Barable gag. Just like the adventure line the or the bucket Thank destroyer you until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and It's just so bad because, like, every five minutes you see something spark in this game. There it goes. It just floats in the distance, slowly spinning to sad music. The bucket destroyer, <laughs> my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. Also, another thing that was really s kind of silly to me, like I know it was just for emotional dramatic effect, but for the cargo lift, you jump off from the cargo lift and immediately die, but with the staircase, you it's a higher up elevation, but it takes three times. But a shorter distance, just like, well, you're dead now. Bye-bye. It's like, okay. And then also, if you choose, if you go, oh, I'm this, huh? Hold on, the layout changed. All of his co-workers were gone. The whiteboard what could it mean? Dog bark. Stanley oh, no. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Dog mode now. 
Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. It's bucket time. It's bucket time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. I think Stiggly would be a great name for things, personally. I would be much more compelled to collect things if they were called Stiggly Wigglies. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Bucket was Stanley wrong. took the door on his left to go oh, back uh, to the meeting room. I'm just getting all the stupid unhinged bucket and no, right now. said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. The go somewhere right. else. Like, want, the cargo want, lift, yes. Just go just good, stupid. said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. I have now uh, asserted that whoever that is is your favorite staff member. One In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. I'm going to my bucket. The telephone. Now okay, pick I'm up the phone. I'm going to unplug the telephone because I love the oh, not Stanley hold ending. Hold on. With Why did you it's unplug the phone? It's just narrator screaming. Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket <laughs> isn't talking you to you and telling you to do timing. things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Uh, can't you see? Oh, oh goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did plays, I mess up the joke? Uh, what is Should comedic I have timing paused video? for longer or spoken quicker? It's so mm, comedic timing is so I difficult. I wish I were better at it, but there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. I'm done with the funny. <laughs> So what is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then, Spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny. With the funny, let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. He didn't say he was Dunny with the funny. That's why he's not funny. He didn't pay attention to his what is comedic timing video, obviously. Good. This he saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. 
With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invaders who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles, all of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Goofy-ass, passive-aggressive, autistic, omnipresent bastard. What do you say? Yeah, <laughs> look at you. No, I can oh, feel I it. Oh, I this time, the I'm really going closed. to nail the delivery. It, You'll be in knows. stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. Yeah. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. This Thank goodness we had the cycle. instructional video. Stanley. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be Sorry, right buddy, now. The well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke yeah. to Stanley. Yeah, Stanley's hmm. about to meet you there. The bucket spoke... <laughs> The bucket got a bit of the metaphors. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. I like how there's a caution. There's a sign that says caution. Do not lie. If you are lying right now, stop. <laughs> I love the stupid signs on the walls. If I can find a way back through the new content door to get back to the, uh... The uh, Stanley Parable 2 museum thingy. I want to go. B I want to get the bottomless pit ending again because it's so fun. It's so stupid. And at the end, he just like sits in there like Here a little go. toddler You're playing ready? in a <clears throat> sand bucket. When Stanley and the bucket <laughs> came like to a, a set of pit. two open doors, they entered the door on the left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this was all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud? Of yourself for bringing me down, the, Stanley. Are you proud? Here we go. Stanley usually you ready? <clears throat> when whatever, Stanley and um, the bucket came to a set of two open doors, know. they entered the door um, on the left. Yeah, kind of bad memory, so he like forgets most of it, but he knows like most stuff because he's he's also helping us learn. Um, I don't know a lot of ASL, or he'll just like write stuff down. So I have I have to have narrator tell me what he's doing. Um. <laughs> But he just, just the fucking Stanley suicidal or dramatically puts his hands on his head and gasps. Also, like, I have heard Stanley say, like, one, like, two sentences. At one point, he just mumbled a fuck you at the narrator. And a second time, he was just like, no, kill myself. Because he accidentally knocked over our cans. He's also just dramatically screamed into the pillow because... With Stanley Parable TikTok comes the cursed things that we don't talk about. He saw one of those, slammed her phone down, took off her glasses, face planted into her bed, screamed in the pillow, sat back up, and just nodded his head. Just like, I'm good. I'm good. And then got back to building Legos. <laughs> like, he, like, nothing happened. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, 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 what's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit, which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. 
I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of king of comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling whelp. I think... I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional video again. Yeah, no, it'll watch your instructional video. Surely that will help me improve my... Stinky. Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you... <clears throat> it's as though all of your other most prized possessions... Now he's trying to make bucket jokes. He's failing yes. miserably at bucket puns. Let me try that again, Stanley. He's making I really bad bucket puns at Stanley. Over how in this ending right now. With a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame? Pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? <laughs> Stanley, this bucket so is so hard. mental. I think I saw him playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I just, I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. What I want to go back to my silly birds. I love my more silly birds. instructional videos. Let's see. Let's see. Silly, silly birds. I love silly birds. Me when the bucket turns the mind control facility controls on. Just a step through Let's this door, bucket. Stanley thought to himself. That's I all I need. If I can make it through well this someday. door, it's bucket time. It's bucket time. I'm going to be saying that forever now. It's bucket time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Wacky line. I love saying that. Still no one was here. Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find out. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the wind, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Text-to-speech app and getting pissed off because the voice just like constantly sounds like it has an attitude. So when he was like, seriously? When he was trying to say it in a way, the tone was like, seriously? He just went, seriously? He was just like, no, not, no, stop that. And tried to fight with it for like, 10 minutes just to realize he was never going to get anywhere with it. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. No, the silence. Hello? The lights rose on an enormous room Still packed there? with television screens. What toy. horrible wow. secret did this place hold? Stanley yeah, and the bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. Cool stuff was just the bucket like left had never in, seen uh, anything like this, so and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it. That yeah, it was just in the fine. corner. I was just like, that's stinky stuff. So I was like, yeah. I was like, should I take it home? I was like, yeah. Was, was the bucket under the mind control it, facility's yeah, influence as well? Okay. Had the bucket that's been told to do to things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raised furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. Yeah. No! So he screamed into the bucket. Are, he her, couldn't accept it. Sick, His own life in someone else's control? Never! Wasn't he squeezed the bucket true. tighter. You His were indeed having a mental health entire health. world. I didn't know if you want this point, her to know or not. He could so trust have no one anything. except for the bucket. You're welcome. I'm just gonna keep up but with here them. was the proof. The heart uh, of the operation. Point, kind of controls cool. labeled with emotions. Happy or sad Daddy. or content. I Walking, didn't really know. Yeah, eating, I didn't know working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. 
and as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds! Birds. Silly, silly birds. The control silly buttons birds, became active guys, again. Guys, silly birds! Flamingo. The bird. Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another, and then it dawned on him. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. At the bucket gonna die his hair dark blue Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, living through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. And Stanley was happy. Stanley experiencing happiness? Real? I thought that was a myth. Also, like, Someone Adi was following Stanley. He was sure of it. If he checked over his shoulder now, he would surely catch them. It's bucket time. time. Now, I don't even think it's been a week yet since I bought the game. Because I've been Stanley off seven of the content for a while, but I've never actually played the and game until the, the last door on his left. But he was just like in absolutely flabbergasted by how quickly this was I not directly downloaded to the meeting room. For that but like, Stanley had felt so the bucket calling so to him, like, no. telling him that the employee lounge was know. simply the place to be. And nice here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Nice was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, sip. perhaps it truly was. Right how yeah, insightful the bucket so turned out to be. Such a lovely um room. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love you. Love that painting of a leaf that's in the hallway. Being here with the bucket was a grand adventure. It is a great Stanley adventure. reflected Thank on you for all they'd area. been it through is a together. Grand adventure First, walking through the door on the right. Life. Then I walking to the lounge. Then arriving at the, the lounge. Uh, what a thrilling lounge. journey the bucket had inspired. Don't you when the bird's silly? Perhaps this was where the bucket felt most truly at home. Here in the employee lounge. Perhaps it's the only place a bucket can even feel at home. Don't you the when bird silly? Stanley decided to just give the bucket absolutely as much time as it needed to be in the lounge. Clearly the bucket and the employee lounge shared a special connection. What do you these mugs say? I mo be I love only reading like half the mug. Fart. <laughs> Number one, dad. I feel like narrator would have some stupid mug. Just like it's like one of those world's best boss mugs, but its boss is scribbled out with narrator in like a sharpie or something. <laughs> He would have one of those goofy ass mugs. I feel like Stanley would also like collect cat mugs. He'd collect every cat. He could not go into a store without buying every cat mug he saw. He's a silly little guy who sits in little holes with his buckets like a kid in the sand pit. Also, at the bottom of the bottomless pit, for some reason, there's just, like, part of the lyrics to just the two of us in there. Proceed. But finally, the bucket was done being in the lounge, and they the took the first open the door on their left to get back to business. I will not be getting back to business. 
No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. But Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself from the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. Oh yeah, I went this way to originally get the <laughs> the ending where narrator spirals into All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had said oh, yeah. it's bucket time. It's bucket time. He went it's bucket time. Don't you the went bucket? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. I did not take the door on my left to go back to the room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone. Sorry, I was picking up the phone in the game. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, really, actually, I gave I Stanley a bucket time. because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Occasionally, Stanley will just sit there with the bucket on his head. Like a Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Oh, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it would ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. <sighs> you see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is this awful bucket, this stupid hunk of metal. It's sad, but I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, Sorry, empty guys. bucket, I, this uh, sort of shiny alcohol. bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to talk it. To my bestie. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. So true. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? I'm having feelings for the bucket. 
no, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. Bucket. The bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... Go to work, Stanley. Yeah. Me and my bucket. Me win bucket. Oh, bucket. Oh. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Me. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Mommy, Perhaps yeah. he had simply missed a memo. Whiteboard ending again. Dog mode. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Alright, come here, bucket. It's bucket time. It's bucket time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back, and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance the section and walked straight... Bye-bye, guys. I got a case of the sillies. Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. It's bucket time. It's bucket time. I love echoing him. He's so fun to echo. It's bucket time. There it is. Stanley oh, clutched the bucket Stanley tightly to his. This was not the correct way to the yeah. meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket, the bucket was correct. wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. I think I've already done this with the bucket. Okay. This is done. Yeah, I've already done this one with the bucket. I want to try going there without the bucket. See if that sounds different. So I've been there with the bucket. Let's go there without the bucket. Why are there papers everywhere? What the f Hello? I can't even read these. What the fuck did these say? All of his co-workers were gone. Why are there papers what could everywhere? It mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting he room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Someone had a little too much fun with the No body. matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. I really want to know what these fucking papers say. I literally can't read them. I didn't think they'd say anything, to be honest. There might just be papers everywhere. Why is there papers everywhere? It's Jerry, turn up your time. damn computer. You're too Susan, Barbara. Papers everywhere. All over the damn place. I want to go in there. Open the door. Open the door. Stanley clutched oh, the bucket boys. tightly to his chest and entered the door. I meant to not grab the bucket, and I grabbed the bucket. God damn it. Hold on. Let's try this again. I grabbed the bucket. No All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Oh, yeah, no Stanley right. decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Oh, Again, the end is never the end. 
Whoa, Balloon! My bad, Balloon. I didn't know you were coming in today. I thought you were still on maternity leave. How's the wife? Glad she's doing well. Keep the good work, girl. Glad to see you back at home. No work. Not at home. I messed up my own skit. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct I'm way to the meeting the room, funny. and Stanley knew it perfectly Laugh. well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Johnny with the funny. It was okay. You're okay. But eager to get back okay, to business, Stanley took the first You're open door on his left. You're okay. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Oh, Any more random time? <sighs> nope. Let's go this way. Lost Iggly Wiggly. Right, let's see what it sounds Stanley like. had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun to drop so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun to drop so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun to drop so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun to drop so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun to drop so You didn't think I was actually just a recording, did you? What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording? It was all just in Stanley's head. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Life being an unending waterfall of surprises and delights. How much more exciting you must find the world than the rest of us do. <sighs> Now I've become sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. Little bitch. I think you need to get better at storytelling, little man. Yeah, that's right. You heard me, little man. Even now, Stanley's office was a distant memory. What did it look like? There was a computer, perhaps, and a painting. Was it a painting Giant or a photo? Ass. He could no I'm longer recall. I'm gonna take his knees. When I'm Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Which way do I want to go? I think I've actually gone all the endings. Well, no, there's one ending that I haven't gotten so far. I haven't gotten the heaven ending with the bucket, but I don't think it's any different. I haven't gotten the uh, ending where you sit here for four hours and play the baby game. So I hate that baby. I hate babies. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. It was okay. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Safe, Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong go foot play here. Balls. I'm not your enemy, Wait. really, I'm not. <laughs> I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be ball. difficult, but the fact <laughs> is that the story has been Stanley about nothing but ball. you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Yeah, someone you've forgotten. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are yeah. you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Yeah. Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, no but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. No, Look, fucker, let me prove it. You. Let me I prove that you. I'm on your bucket. side. Give me a chance. Fuck it. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Stanley wants to climb! Aha. <laughs> Perhaps you Fuck misunderstood. You. I like blue Stanley color. walked through the red door. I, don't, I still I don't, don't think we're communicating red. properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Ah, yes, the red door. This is red. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Yay! You see? 
supposed There's to nothing develop here. Textures. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth yes. ruining the entire story I had written out yeah, specifically absolutely. for you? you? Do you not it's think great. I put a lot of time into that? I really because I did. It. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Hello. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. No. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You give me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we know. were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Oh, of course. A three. Really. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion, you know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Does that sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. You're now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. I don't know about this. In this game, the baby oh, crawls please. left towards danger. You click the button I to move him back to the right, these. and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Burn. Be sure to keep notes on your experience. No more babies! 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 No more babies. I'm you sick of babies! Wow. Bastard! Did you do it because you hate babies or yes. purely to spite me? Yeah. Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely yes. out of ideas. I can't think silly of a autism. single thing that might improve the experience autism. for me. However, I'm not even going to try. We'll I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. I want Thank to you play for playing. Your input was extremely game. valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? I want to mm -hmm. Maybe you can build a better house. Yes. This dirt. seems like it'll work. Loser. Let's give it a shot. Haha, <laughs> dirt house. I do love that. I might go back to the original Stanley Parable just to get that scene. Aha! Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Minecraft. Oh, no. No, 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 it can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly, block it off. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You really wandered off into that, that thing, that big open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh, thank heavens we avoided it. We're out of the woods now, Stanley. 
Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. Okay, I think this will be just the thing. Autistic Airways culture is liking the Stanley Parable. My source... I like the Wonderful. Stanley Parable. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. Yay, there isn't any possibility you that you could get in. lost here. Now this is game design. Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Ball! Ball! We. Oh, it didn't go very far. Come on, get out of here. I'm a ball. I'm playing. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? Are you winning, Is it son? better than my I miserable am. little story I'm that winning. I worked so hard on? Stanley, I'm I have a I'm and winning. I realize I'm not a sportsologist, but if one ball generates a certain amount of raw my adrenal ball. pleasure, then surely multiple balls makes for an even more euphoric sports experience. I'm going to try it out. Here comes speed. another ball. I can I think Zan yes. Stanley just needs oh, to do goodness, that really does honest. feel amazing, doesn't it? Stanley, I'm like a child in a confectionery shop. I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. More balls! More balls! I think Stanley just needed to have some time to do some zoomies. Honestly, bro needed his zoomies. Whee! Are you enjoying this, Stanley? I am! I'm having, I'm having a lot of fun! I love Is this balls. a real video game? It well, is! Well, I sure hope you're having a good time, because guess what? It's over. No! That's give me right. my balls! Your little fun I... comes to an end. This is my Damn game, it. Never and what took I my say balls. goes. You get to have fun Not when again. I let you, Stanley. Besides, you need someone like me to set boundaries for you. No, I want to do Without rules or boundaries, balls. video games are nothing. Yes, that's what I am. I am structure. I'm your sense of purpose. And since no, you decided you didn't want to play my game, now I don't want to play with you either. So goodbye, Stanley. I'm leaving. Goodbye. See, hold on. What are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. Stanley and the narrator go from being gay little bastards to being a mom who lost her kid in a Walmart. Lost her husband to be on a leash in Walmart. Stanley's the kid that needs to be on a leash. They're either really gay or they're a mom and her Zoomies son that should probably be leashed getting lost in a Walmart. Stanley got lost in the Walmart as a kid. That's why narrator needs to watch him so closely. He still has that mentality of a child running off in a Walmart and getting lost. Or got lost in a Walmart. It says here you have no bitches. It says here you're gay. I'm not done.
Okay, now I've got it. Hold on. Beep. Now I'm done. Unless I'm not. Beep. 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 Now I'm done. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down got in no bitches, wherever he is narrator. right now. No bitches. I wonder if he's happy with his choice. Zero. And if he's learned None. the heavy cost that Absolutely. comes with it. He'll no understand bitches. soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. No bitches, Someone who will wrap everything no up at the end no bitches, to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. Nothing. That's Nothing who I there, because he has that is what I mean no to this bitches world. for narrator. Oh, yes, yes, Bitchless. I'll be back. No there's no other way. What a loser! Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end yeah. will be here soon. Very well, soon. Yeah, never the end, though. Ooh, I can wait. Can you though? You're a pretty impatient guy. I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> what a loser. What an absolute loser. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I don't want to hear from a man who took away my balls. It was okay. You took my balls. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. You put me in a little box and took away my balls. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Do with some zoomies. Like if, I Look, feel Stanley, like, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Time throughout the I'm day, not your I'd enemy, have really, I'm not. I, had some I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you forgot. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Yeah, Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. I like red today. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just... stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. What are we looking for? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> I do actually genuinely love this place. I I hate the rest of the way that this this ending goes. However, I do love some silly lights. I say you're looking at silly lights. This is like actually really beautiful. I do love the silly lights. Like honestly.
Oh, my glasses are scuffed up again. I hate glasses so much. Silly lights. Silly lights to go with silly birds. A silly little object. You know what's not silly though with my fucking glasses? Where? Oh, why this is Oh, I love this. I I would genuinely just like sit here forever. I I do really love this, honestly. I'm not gonna finish this ending. I'm just gonna sit here and look at some of these because they're honestly really cool. And I do love this. That is all for this time. Um, I'll see you guys later.